Well, welcome back to Math 221. Um, today we're going to uh, continue looking um, at the derivative. Um, and, and the goal is that we can come away from this lecture with the ability to find the derivative of um, the majority of the functions we're going to be working with this quarter. Okay, last lecture we you know looked really in depth at uh, using this limiting process to calculate the derivative, um, and in this one we'll uh, sort of develop um, seven or so um, specific rules that will help us calculate them faster. Okay. And in order to do that, I'm going to give you a piece of notation. Uh, this is just another way to talk about the derivative. Now we've um, we've so far looked at the derivative as um, like the physical derivative of a function, right? F prime is the derivative of f, uh, of f of x, right? Um, but we can also think of the derivative as an operator. Right, as as something you do to a function, right? Sort of like squaring, right? Squaring has this notation where you write a little two um, in the upper right. And the way that we can talk about the derivative of the, as an operator like this is to write it like this: d over dx of f of x. Okay, um, and it's it's traditional um, when you're putting a function in. Um, to use these square brackets, although, you know, sometimes people get a little bit lax about that, okay? So we're going to look at, as I said, a bunch of derivative rules. Okay. And to clean this up a little bit, I'll put our notation over here and the derivative at the top, okay? The first one is the derivative of a constant, right? So d dx of c, what would that equal? Well, a constant function, if we think about it geometrically, a constant function is just a line at y equals c, just a flat line. So that means that our derivative is zero, right? You, you, you can go through um, and, and prove this from the limit definition. Um, some of these will um, prove with the limit definition. Um, in this case, I'll, I'll leave this one to do on your own. And then others are just a bit too involved for us to prove um, in this class. Uh, but obviously, you know, they're all provable. Um, but so, you know, if you saw something like, you know, what's the derivative of pi squared. Well, pi squared is a constant, so it's zero. Okay, this one is not too terribly involved. Um, so we'll move on to our second one, um, which we will actually get a lot of use of. And it's sometimes called the power rule. Okay, this is another one um, in the line of we won't prove. Um, so if we just have something like x to the n, right, for some fixed n, right, uh, this equals, w when you take the derivative, n times x to the n minus 1, right? So our n drops down, and we subtract 1 from the exponent, OK? Um, we showed this already um, last lecture uh, for the derivative of x squared, right? Um, we saw that d dx of x squared equals 2x, right? Um, in your homework, um, one of the problems will be to uh, show this for x cubed um, from the limit definition. So I'll let you do that there. Um, and then uh, let's run some examples, right? So if we say... Right. What's f of x, or what's what's the derivative if we have f of x equals a, uh, just x, right? Then f prime of x. Well, this there's a one up here, right? So we're going to drop down our one, and we're going to multiply that by x to the zero, 
right? Because 1 minus 1 is 0. x to the 0 is just 1, and 1 times 1 is 1. Okay. What about something like g of x is x to the 8th? Well, because of this nice power rule, we know that g prime of x, our 8 drops down, our x stays, and the exponent on x becomes 8 minus 1, or 7. Okay. This doesn't just work for whole numbers, though. right? If we have something, if we have something like... Um, x to the 5 halves, right? If we're dealing with x to the 5 halves, this is still x to some exponent, right? To some real valued exponent. So we can follow the same power rule. We're going to get 5 halves times x. 5 halves minus 1 is going to be 5 halves minus 2 halves. So x to the 3 halves, OK? Anything that looks like x to the single power um, of, of some real number follows the power rule. Next, we can look at something like this, right? Um, a, a constant multiple, right? So, so instead of just taking um, the derivative of a, a constant, say we're doing something like this. We, we have some function. We, we multiply it by a constant, and we're looking to find the derivative of this, right, where we stipulate, obviously, that f of x um, needs to be a differentiable function in the first place. Well, let's go to the limit definition, and, and let's make a little substitution, okay? Let's say g of x equals c times f of x. Well... Our definition says we're looking at the limit as h goes to 0 of g times x plus h minus g of x over h. But notice that we have c, f of x plus h. That's, that is the definition of g of x plus h, right? Minus, well, g of x is c times f of x over h. There's a common factor of c here, so I could bring my c out there, but because of the limit laws, right, this is c times the limit of h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, which is c times f prime of x. So our um, so that means that our constant factors out, out the front of a function, those just factor through our derivative, OK? And that's really nice, right? Because that allows us to calculate a, that, that, that sort of broadens the range of functions that we can find the derivative of. Right? That's what we're trying to do. We, we have this nice tool, and we're trying to you know, speed up the process, right? So. If we say f of x is 5x cubed, then what we can do is we can ignore this 5 for a second, take the derivative of x cubed, and then multiply by the 5 again. Right? So that means f, f prime of x is going to be 5. Well, times what? The derivative of, of x cubed, the 3 drops down, and we subtract one from our exponent. Multiplying those together, we see 15x squared. Okay. We can also do something like this. Right? We can say take the derivative of 3 over the cube root of x. Okay, well, what's our derivative now? Well, it's going to be 3 times the derivative of 1 over the cube root of x. But here's what I want you to notice. That's negative... That's x to the negative one-third. So here, our power rule applies, right? This guy doesn't necessarily look right away like it's something power rule related, but it is, right? 
So that means that when we take our derivative, we can bring this negative one third down, and we're going to have x to the minus one third minus one. Our three and our one third are going to cancel, so we're going to have negative x to the minus four thirds, or if you prefer, negative one over x to the four thirds, right? So this 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 constant multiple um, rule. It allows us to um, move things down like this and, uh, you know, treat these nice expressions out, out the front. For our fourth rule, we're going to have a look at something that we mentioned last lecture. And that's the sum and difference of functions. Okay, so what happens when we're looking at this, right, f of x plus g of x, or f of x minus g of x. And we can solve this one pretty much just like we solved the last one by creating some function equal to the sum or difference, which, whichever one you're wanting to calculate, of f of x and g of x, right? So this guy's derivative is going to be the same as the derivative of this guy, right? Because our, our, our two functions are equal. So if we look at our limit, as h goes to 0, of h of x plus h, I guess I should maybe name this one a little bit different. Maybe we'll go q, right? so, so we're not dealing with two h's. Uh, minus q of x all over h. But we know what h equals, or what q equals. right? This is f of x plus h, plus or minus. Uh, g of x plus h minus f of x plus or minus g of x all over h. But I can group these in such a way that the expected expression pops out, right? I can regroup this as f of x plus h uh, minus f of x over h plus or minus, depending, g of x plus h minus g of x all over h. And then, of course, we get what it would be really nice if it were true, and it is, that the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives, and likewise with the difference, okay? And this allows us, all of a sudden, we can find our derivatives of something like this, a, a, a full-on polynomial, right? 3x to the fourth minus 8x squared, say plus x plus 3. And we can do that, right? We, we can calculate the derivative of it. And we can do that, right? We, we can calculate the derivative of, of this whole guy by doing what? Well, that means f prime of x, we can split over the sums and the differences, right? So we're going to get d dx of 4x to the fifth plus d dx of 3x to the fourth minus the derivative on this color coding, 8x squared, that should be blue, plus the derivative of x, and then we're going to have the derivative of three added on to the end, right? And and we can calculate these derivatives one at a time. For four x to the fifth, our five drops down and we have um, four times five is 20. X to the five minus one is four. 
For this one, our 4 drops down, multiplying by our 3 to get 12. Then we have x cubed minus our 2 is going to drop down, multiplied by our 8 for a 16x. Our singular x has derivative 1, and our 3 drops. Okay. So just like that, you know, before, if, if we wanted to put this through the big limit thing, you'd have to calculate x plus h to the fifth. And that would be, you know, very much, very much not ideal, right? Um, but, but we're not limited to just polynomials, right? Say we wanted um, to find an equation with a tangent line to, say, f of x equals, I don't know, 2x plus 1 over the square root of x um, at x equals 1, right? So we need a couple pieces of information. First, we're going to need to calculate f of 1, right? So, so when, when we end up getting our equation of the line, it looks like we're going to have 2 plus 1 equals 3, right? 1 over the square root of 1 is just one. Okay, and now we need to calculate our derivative. Well, f prime of x is going to be the derivative of this plus the derivative of that. The derivative of 2x, my 2 is going to factor through, and my derivative of x is 1, so we're just left with 2. And then here's the complicated part, right? We need to take the derivative of 1 over the square root of x. But as we saw before, right, 1 over the square root of x is x to the negative 1 half, right? So what that means I can do is I have 2 plus my 1 half comes down, and then I subtract 1 from this. Subtracting 1 from this, I get x to the negative 3 halves, right? And writing this as an expression without any negative exponents, we get 2 minus 1 over 2 times x to the 3 halves. And now calculating our derivative, or our, our um, slope at, at that point, right, is super easy because we just need to calculate f prime of 1. And f prime of 1 is going to be 2 minus 1 over 2. 1 to the 3 halves is just 1. We're left over with 3 halves. And now I can use, you know, whichever e e equation for a line you prefer. I'm going to use um, the point-slope form. We have the an equation for our line. It's going to be y minus 3 equals our slope times x minus 1, right? And if you graphed um, this function, and if you graphed this line, this line is guaranteed to be tangent to this function at x equals 1, okay?